Welcome to Advanced Business Strategy, Module 1, Strategy Over Time. In this module, we're going to talk about the dynamics of competition. We're going to introduce the idea of the competitive life cycle. We're going to discuss how incumbent firms often uh, face hardship when they face new technologies that disrupt their markets. And we're going to discuss ways in which firms might deal with these disruptions and analyze these disruptions that they might face. I'd like to begin with the story of four iconic firms, firms that in their day were the most successful within their industry and marketplace. The first, Studebaker Brothers. After the Civil War in the United States, the Studebaker Brothers emerged as the premier maker of horse-drawn carriages. At the height of their popularity, they commanded a 60% market share within that market. And then along came an innovation the one depicted next to me here, the horseless carriage, better known as the automobile. Now, in fact, the Studebaker brothers made the transition from horse-drawn carriages to the automobile. In the picture, we actually see the famous inventor Thomas Edison sitting next to one of the Studebaker brothers in their new electric vehicle that they had come to the market with. And in fact, the Studebaker brothers did sell automobiles for a number of years. However, they never had the same success that they had in the horse-drawn carriage market, and eventually they went bankrupt and out of business. Remington Typewriter. Remington Typewriter was the premier typewriter maker at the beginning of the 20th century. At the height of their popularity, they commanded an 80% market share within the New York City office environment. Now, you might imagine what happened to them. First, we saw the introduction of the electronic typewriter pioneered by IBM. And then eventually, we saw the entry of personal computing and word processing. And as you can imagine, uh, Remington went out of business eventually. Kodak, a more recent example. Kodak was the premier maker of film for film-based cameras. Over the 20th century, over a 100-year reign, they were the leaders within this field, a highly successful and profitable company. More recently, within the last few years, they've had to declare bankruptcy. One might imagine what happened here, the advent of digital photography, and in particular, the rise of smartphones and the like as camera devices, rendered their core capability in film obsolete. Now, while Kodak still survives today, they are just a shell of where they were even 10 years ago. What's interesting about the Kodak story was that it wasn't that Kodak didn't see this coming. In fact, Kodak had been working on digital technology, digital imaging technology, way back even in the early 1980s, and even has some of the first patents for digital imaging. They had made numerous investments into digital technology and had brought a number of interesting innovations to market. Even as late as 2004, they were one of the leaders in point-and-shoot cameras, digital point-and-shoot cameras. Yet, at the end of the day, they still weren't able to make the transition and as a result are just a shell of their former self. Last but not least, Sears. Sears was the preeminent retailer through much of the 20th century in the United States. They started out as a catalog business. Their catalog so popular, people called it the Bible of retailing. And then eventually they moved on to a new business model where they were often the anchor of large uh, suburban malls. Well, over the last 20 years or so, uh, the market hasn't been as kind to Sears. And in particular, what's interesting and why I bring them up, it wasn't necessarily a new technology that has made Sears uh, struggle, but a new business model, a business model pioneered by the likes of Walmart, where we have these large big box stores that pioneered where they would locate these stores and also a lot of the, the uh, distribution and logistics behind having those stores. Now, Sears still exists today, but once again, like some of the other examples, they're a shell of their former selves. So while back in the 1970s we might cite them as one of the premier examples of successful firms within the United States, today they struggle to survive. All four of these examples highlight the importance of thinking about time and thinking about dynamics. Each of these were successful companies by any measure in their time period. However, circumstances changed. New technologies came about. New business models came about and they were unable to make the transition to those node domains. So our topic for this module is to understand these types of life cycles, these types of dynamics, and ultimately try to provide advice for how you can survive and even thrive 
in the throes of these types of disruptions.